When it comes to things like grief, most people can't comprehend why it is that uh, people have trouble with such a thing. And uh, the best way to describe it is a story of this woman named uh, McLover. She has a YouTube channel, and at some point she decided to upload a video talking about like the murder of her mother, where uh, someone had taken her mom out down and alive her. And she spent a long time trying to figure out um, who did it, right? She put out flyers. She invested thousands of dollars. She worked day and night to find out who did this to her mother. Um, it wore her down. Her body got weak. She didn't sleep very well. She was on edge. She paced back and forth. Every time she thought about the scenario... Um, had her on edge, had her riled up, all of this shit, right? <clears throat> and then most people with grief recognize um, those symptoms because it leads to this anger. It, it leads to straight anger, and that anger can easily become hatred if you're not careful. Um, most people don't realize that they're getting hateful, though. And most people will assume that the person has no right to be hateful, not realizing, uh, no, most people have a right to be hateful. Most people are annoying enough to hate them. So, you know, like, that's just a default given. But with grief, is exponentially worse, because it's just like, you know, you're not the person I want to deal with anyway, so you don't have to talk to me at all. You know, like, it's one of those things where it's just like, you just decide you're going to just not give a fuck who you lose or what you do to people or how you participate with folk it's just one of those things where it's like it takes away your decency of humanity um it kind of makes you forget the person you used to be because the thing that like you love so much because you know grief is where love has nowhere to go like you have all this love and all this potential for um a whole other person and if they're taken from you if they're gone if there's no way for you to get any of that back um people tend to lose their shit people will lose their minds people go through strong strong lifestyle changes that um just disrupts everything that they is most people don't even realize it um, and then when you're in the midst of grief, you really can't see yourself for what you is at that point. All you see is what's troubling you. All you see is what's haunting you to your very core. Now with the McLover chick, or McLovin, I'm not sure what her name is. Um, I'm not trying to say it wrong, but I think it's McLover. But with her, <clears throat> she was so bothered tortured which i can never imagine what it would be like to um lose my mother in a method like that it is not because me and my mom really don't get along or nothing like that it's not like that at all it's more along the lines of i couldn't imagine going through the throes of that yet again because i already went through that with my kids um uh, still going through with the children i couldn't imagine going through that with my mother knowing that she was taken in that manner um but at some point she was tired so tired she went to the spot where her mom had laid for the final time and laid next to that spot i think it was on a sidewalk she said and she just was next to that spot crying her eyes out and saying mama i'm tired and i cannot do this anymore and i remember the first time she said that because I'm like actually like kind of tearing up from it a little bit. I cried because I can't, I because that's like that is a very hard thing to do to actually give up the ghost of um someone you love so dearly. Someone you hold in high regard. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be an animal, a dog, whatever. It doesn't matter. The thing you love, to have to give it up completely as if it, it, it never existed. To carry on as if it didn't play this significant role in your life is, um... The hardest thing possible 
a human being could ever do. To give up what it is, um... <clears throat> <coughs> Jesus Christ. To give up what it is, uh, that you looked up to, that inspired you, that you were that you inspired all of the emotions, uh, the bad, the good, the, all of those memories gotta go out the drain because of grief. Not because um, they were bad for you, but in a sense, you love them so much that you hate yourself because there's nothing you could have done to change things, right? And that's a hard thing to actually deal with. Um, it's a hard thing to have to accept and usually around the time when it's like uh, you know someone's anniversary when they passed or uh, a particular moment like this is where you met somebody or this was their favorite clothes uh, certain words could trigger a person like like for example there was one year uh, I can't remember I think it was actually last year now I think about it uh, there was, I, I don't remember what the fucking conversation was about, but at some point I remember saying something like, oh yeah, that's good for kids. And I don't think it was, um, I don't think it was around the kids' birthdays. It might have been close. Probably before, because usually I'm good after their birthdays. But it was like, I don't even know what it was. But as soon as the thought of kids left, something in my brain just snapped on. I was just like, oh yeah, your kids are dead. You should be sad. You're just seasoning all that pressure. And it was just like, I didn't need this. I was doing perfectly fine before these emotions erupted out of me to remind me of this. This lingering existence. This lingering sensation that I never asked for, nor wanted to be invited to. And there's, and a lot of times there's nothing much you could do about that. Um, a lot of times, you can't do anything about that. Um, a lot of times, you kind of just end up sitting there just... The fuck? You know, and it's frustrating because you want to let it go. You want to let these sensations go. You want to let all these pain go. You want to let all this aching, this longing, this yearning, this missing, this nostalgia, everything. It, it, it like you could rest if you could just let it go. But then, who would remember with you? Would anyone remember at all? Would anybody bring it up? And that's and, and that's something that's kind of hard to uh, deal with. Um, it's actually not the letting go part that's painful. It's the fact that sometimes you can't let go because you're the only person who's keeping that person alive by the memories. And it's painful. And it aches. And it is a burden that's hard for anybody to bear. Um, whether they chose to or because it was bestowed upon them by fate itself. But, um... Hearing a whole other person have an entirely different but very familiar to my own sense of grief give up completely on it. Not because they wanted to, because they didn't have a choice. It's a hard thing to fucking do. But a lot of, but sometimes you have to. Because, you know, the people who you're grieving over are counting on you. Um, to, like, do the best you can. Like, you know that you wouldn't be acting this way if they were here. It's not fair to use them as an excuse for it now, you know? It's one of those things where you have to decide, are you, are you, are you going to let this eat you away, or are you going to be the person that the people who you're missing know you were to be, and that you can be? That's, that's the, the thing that you need to remember. You need to be what that person needs, because you going around feeling all sorts of things, acting all sorts of ways, thinking all sorts of shit, being 
bothered in your mind by this scenario, this event, this act, this scene, this chapter of your life when you have so much and have done so much with it and there's so much more to do. For me personally, I try to be as happy and honestly as joyful, carefree as possible because I don't get to sit here and watch my kids grow up to be that way before the world comes in and corrupts their fucking minds. I don't get to see that. I get to live my best life just so my kids know I, I would have allowed them to have that. And grief's different from everybody and they have to find their own way to resolve their grief one way or another. It just gets harder. You know, um, you know, time doesn't really heal things as much as it does erode um, memories like water does to rocks over eons and eons. It's a long, hard process. But even then, it'd be stupid to walk in the water um, with no shoes considering those smooth rocks can still cut you if you fall on them the wrong way or you slide a certain way and just like with, right in between your fucking toes, the webbing. Could you imagine that? That's actually happened to me before, and I was wearing flip-flops. <sighs> I had these pink flip-flops, man, and they were fucking awesome. I had them for a long time. Those were my favorite ones. now. I didn't need to be in those shoes anyway. Someone could have taken my shoes to begin with, but you know. Someone could have taken my shoes trying to be in my shoes, and then they found out it wasn't very fun being in my shoes at all. That's beside the point. The point is, you have to look at yourself, you know. I'm not really trying to inspire anybody as much as I am just rambling because, you know, my own personal feelings at the current moment. Uh, I'm waiting for it. Oh, believe me, I'm waiting for it. I like it's already past my son's birthday. He's on the twentieth. I gotta see what happens with the daughters. But normally after their birthdays are perfectly fine. But I still got like a whole month waiting for me. And I'm just sitting here like something's gonna make me start bawling in the goddamn bathroom at work, and everyone's gonna think that a customer yelled at me. Or worse, I gotta put all the onions away by myself again. Honestly, I'd rather have a customer yell at me to do that shit again. Because I'm like, that's like, 20, oh my god, I hope that doesn't happen tomorrow. That'd be like, 30, it's a two-day truck. I, I like, that's like 400 fucking cases. Anyway, I'm going to bed now. Because I just now thought about work tomorrow. And I probably have 400 cases of onions to put away. Wait, no, today, tomorrow's Thursday? Tomorrow's Thursday? Tomorrow's Thursday. I'm in the office tomorrow. Fuck yeah. Never mind. But anyway, y'all, I'm going to bed. I'll talk to you guys later. Be safe. Stay suspicious. And if you're going through what I've gone through when it comes to grief and loss and all of that shit, just keep your head up. Because that's all you can do. Um, you don't have to take it the way I see it. But personally, myself, I don't want to end up like making my kids feel sad because I'm sad about them because then they're gonna I would imagine they feel like it was their fault and I wouldn't want to put that on my kids especially since I didn't get to raise them and they're kind of feral they're, I mean they're probably feral like I, I still love them I just never got a chance to teach them right from wrong with that you know, I mean well honestly they should know better just what They should know how to stay out of jail watching. Yeah, that's the more appropriate thing to say. That. That's the more appropriate thing to say. Yeah, I'd probably be that mom to let them, like, skip school and just stay up and play games all fucking night with them. I would be that mom. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Love your face. Bye.